October was a month full of awesome ultra races and inspirational stories. There was a lot of action all around the world taking us from the United States to France and across Europe. On today's episode, we'll recap the latest and greatest happenings in the ultra cycling world, including past events, guests on our show, and things to look forward to coming soon to this show. Be sure to also tune in now on your favorite audio streaming platform, now playing through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, amongst others. I'm your host, Justin Tu. Let's roll. Hey, Ultra family, Justin Tu here, your host of the Ultra Cycling Show. Let's start our news episode today by covering the recent events on the Ultra Cycling calendar and those highlighted in our show. No Country for Old Men, or NCOM as it's abbreviated, is run by Ram veteran Dex Took, and it began on October 24th, departing from Jeff Davis County Park in Fort Davis, Texas. NCOM featured just four distance options this year, the 75, 150, and 225 miles, and also a 375 mile Ram qualifier option. There wasn't the usual 1,000 mile category this year due to the pandemic, but we'll look forward to seeing it back in action next year. The 375 mile Ram qualifying race had just four finishers with Robert Strickland taking the win in first place with a total time of 23 hours, 26 minutes and three seconds, while his Blitz Racing teammate Chance Warwick took second place in a time of 26 hours, 49 minutes and 43 seconds. Gary Eppel took third to round out the podium for the men's solo upright division. Flora was the only female to complete the 225-mile course, while there was some close competition in the men's division, with the top three men finishing within just about an hour of each other. Sean Chimmel took first place with a time of 16 hours, 27 minutes, and 56 seconds. Next was Dan Rembold in second place with a time of 17 hours, 9 minutes, and 37 seconds. Rounding out the podium in third place was Mike Healy, finishing the course in 17 hours, 42 minutes, and 12 seconds. Congratulations to all the other finishers in the 150 and 75 mile courses. The 850 kilometer self supported Biking Man Corsica event climbed 14,884 meters, almost 50,000 feet, and 528 miles within the five day or 120 hour time limit. The event took riders through the Jewel Island, passing through the Corsica Regional. Nature Park, Southern Paradise Beaches, Enchanting Coastlines, the Cap Course Peninsula, and the Agriates Desert. Anthony Duriani took first place with a time of 55 hours, 15 minutes, and 45 seconds. The first female finisher was Nathalie Bayon with the finishing time of 59 hours and 8 minutes. Well done to all the participants. The race across Europe was conducted as a virtual event this year due to the pandemic and took riders through a virtual continental Europe. The normal course is 4,699 kilometers or 2,920 miles, traveling through France, Germany, Austria, Italy, Slovenia, and finishes in Gibraltar at Europa Point, overlooking Africa. It crosses the Alps twice and the Pyrenees, amongst many others. The overall winner of this event in a time of 12 days, 8 hours, and 35 minutes was none other than Chris Hopkinson, our special guest from episode 22. And believe it or not, his 12-year-old son, Connor, recently completed the entire course too. Can't wait to have Connor on the show soon. Stay tuned for that. The event is still open until December 31st, and you can join at any time and choose to complete it as quickly or slowly as you like. The Notches Trace 444 is an event that traverses 444 miles on one road with no stop signs and no turns through three states in the U.S. It roughly follows the old Natchez Trace, a historic travel corridor used by American Indians, European settlers, soldiers, and future presidents. Today, people can enjoy not only a scenic drive, but also hiking, biking, horseback riding, and camping along the parkway. Among those racing were 2019 Raw finisher Chris Davies, who finished in 25 hours and 47 minutes. Also participating was Ram legend Shauna Hogan, Ram competitor Brian Toon, and Team Bo and Babe, Nancy and John Guth, who we recently interviewed, so stay tuned for an upcoming episode with them. 
Congratulations to all the finishers of what was surely a fun and fast ultra ride. In October, we interviewed eight highly accomplished ultra cyclists from all around the globe, including Filipino, British, Austrian, Slovenian, Bulgarian, Italian, and French ultra racers. We learned a lot from each of their unique experiences and uncovered a lot of their tips and tricks to better our own ultra cycling adventures. In episode 21, we chatted with ultra woman and feisty fox Shangri-La Rendon, who is currently attempting a new Guinness World Record by completing 34 consecutive days of Ironmans. That's a 2.4-mile swim, 112-mile bike ride, and 26.2-mile run every single day for over a month. In total, that will amount to 4,000 miles of bicycling. Shangri-La, the head coach at Feisty Fox Coaching, already has other world records to her name and has participated in the cruise across America with Shauna Hogan and others just recently. Competed in the Red Bull Trans-Siberian Extreme Race through Russia and a whole lot more. If you get a chance and are in the area, go cheer her on down in Long Beach, California. I train with my athletes. You know, we motivate each other. As of now, with pandemic, it's really tough to actually have it in group. Mm. So I do a lot in virtual. <laughs> has been difficult with the pandemic and the fires and everything else, but it hasn't slowed you down at all. <laughs> uh, I know. I try not to. I don't want my athletes to be faster than me. <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing. I got to be yeah. on it. <laughs> you still go at it mm. until you get there. And that's Feisty Fox, never giving up, still okay. going after the dream, being so passionate mm. and doing, giving. I'm not sure mm. I'm going to work it out, but you know what? You know, it's more of like commit first and then there you go. Make it happen. For the Beyond Myself project, are you support, uh, supporting some causes for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. For nonprofit organizations. So it's to empower women, to help those individuals who had PTSD, those who are abused, uh, abused children and underprivileged children. Being invincible is a choice. And in episode 22, we got an inside look into the highly decorated pain cave of Chris Hoppo Hopkinson, who has made that choice for over 20 years as an extremely accomplished ultra racer. Chris is known for more than just his colorful mohawks. He also has five solo ram finishes to his name, including being the first British finisher, 26 world records, 86, 24, and 12 hour races, 12 World Ultra Cycling Association world titles, and he was also awarded the 2015 WUCA Ultra Cyclist of Distinction, amongst his many other achievements. Chris served 10 years in the British Army and afterwards started teaching music and playing in various shows and orchestras before turning into the ultra cyclist he is celebrated for being today. At the very beginning of Chris's ultra cycling career, however, he broke his hip on a ride home one day and the hospital told him that he'd never walk again, let alone race. Yet Chris was determined to prove them wrong. After many years of discipline and determination, Chris went on to achieve many great feats and obtain a large amount of recognition, including a feature in the classic Ram documentary, Bicycle Dreams. I went over the handlebars and landed on my hip again mm. and it reopened the fracture the order an ambulance and I said I wasn't going to go in the ambulance and I made them put me back on my bike. I did another 161 miles and we, we actually won the national team championship. I decided to make an impact that year and be, become the first Brit to ever finish solo ramp, which, which I did. I also decided that I wanted to get noticed. I, I wore a colored mohawk. My rear disc on my wheel was in red, white and blue for the Stars and Stripes, and it mm. said, kiss my ass on it. <laughs> I would hate to even imagine how much money I've spent on race across America and racing in America, um, because a lot of the time it's been all the money I earn and more, and all I can borrow, scrape, save, Episode 23 took us to Austria, where we discussed Philipp Keider's stellar performance in the race around Niederösterreich, coming second only to the one and only Christoph Strasser in his own home country. There's many years of success ahead for Philipp, so it'll be exciting to follow along on his ultra racing journey. It's just hard to believe that until recently, Philipp was a smoker for over 10 years. What an inspiration and motivation for the rest of us. What do you think ultra cycling requires more, physical or mental training? For sure, mental. If you're not um, strong enough on the mental side, you're not able to do the hard training every day. I learned a lot in ultra cycling, and mm. 
af løren. The most in my two DNS and what I learned is that you can't plan anything. Red kilometers I at the same time with Christoph Strasser. The last kilometers he lost three minutes, Christoph. So wow. he lost his motivation because I couldn't catch him, but I had enough motivation because uh Robert Müller was hunting me. Episode 24 was a very special show for the ultra cycling family, being the 10 year commemoration of Jure Robic, the legendary Slovenian ultra cyclist who is best known for winning the race across America five times. In this episode, we had the privilege of commemorating Jure's life with his former crew chief and longtime friend, Matjaj Planinček. We celebrated Jure's life, career in the Slovenian army, ultra racing, and most importantly, the big impact he left on the world and the ultra cycling community world wide we miss you yuri he had a old school paper book like uh, you know marco balok is also talking a lot about that book hmm. those guys they have books paper books and they write down whole old trainings from day one you know they were taught as a as a kid let's say our standard in our crews were always from the day one was one hot meal for the every crew member a day one hot meal Mm. Not much, but everything else was done for Yure. And when he was, those guys were doing pancakes uh, while the motorhome was driving. It was our, you know, army kitchen, all the mm. time moving across America. And mm. Yure riding bicycle in 20 centimeters deep water, that's almost a foot, and just um, not turning the full cycle with his legs, and just doing like this so his feet would not get wet. <laughs> and he didn't stop before that water. He just entered the water and just goes through, goes through you know. It's, nothing will stop him. You know? <laughs> I don't know. The crew cannot win your races, but they can lose the races for you. But we, our feeling of winning was with him. When he won, we won the races. And I don't know. That experience of doing that the way he did it, it's probably what, what stayed with me. So. In episode 25, we discussed Georgi Stoichev's new Maryland cross-state record, traversing 138 miles south to north in an official time of 7 hours and 25 minutes, averaging 18.7 miles per hour after battling strong winds up to 25 miles per hour from the very start of his ride. In this episode, we learned all about his record setting. I wanted to go under 7 hours. Uh, most definitely, mm -hmm. you know, with the power output I had, I mean, I'm pretty confident that in a, in no wind situation, I would see somewhere between uh, 22, 23 miles an hour. This was the first uh, feed stop. I actually broke the route down to uh, six 23 mile even sections. So the crew can report on my progress on an hourly basis. We had a two way radio connection. I was really pleased just two natural breaks, maybe 30 seconds, one, one minute, and then another minute for two uh, feed stops. So everything was super efficient. So I actually had two bottles of Insure poured into one water bottle and then two bottles with scratch. In episode 26, we had the honor of speaking with Stanko Verstoshek and his coach, Alice Suhodolnik, to celebrate Stanko's glorious achievement in breaking and setting 11 world records in the outdoor road category, including the gold standard of 24 hours solo time trial, a record previously set by the one and only six-time Race Across America champion, Christoph Strasser. Stanko rode 914.02 kilometers or 567.946 miles with an average speed of 38.08 kilometers per hour or 23.66 miles per hour, besting Christoph Strausser by 11.09 miles. Stellar performance, Stanko, and we look forward to your 24-hour outdoor track record attempt in 2021. Yes, yes. Service problems. Yes. Wow. And you said that was uh, about 16 hours in? Yes, 16, 17 hours, yes. One minute uh, be uh, up, you know, and then two, three minutes on saddle. And then again, one minute up and wow. two, three minutes set, yes. And 902, yes, kilometers. 902 kilo kilometers, but in group, you know. I saw that uh, I can, uh, in 24 hour uh, side that distance. And I believe uh, that's impossible. Wow. So very interesting. So in fact, you did break the 900 kilometer barrier. Yes, now, now second time, yes. 
but actually you're not stopping here. You're going full speed ahead and you actually plan to attack the 24 hour world record in the outdoor track category as well, right? Yes, yes, that's right. Does uh, Christoph hold that record or who holds that record currently? No, uh, Dizzy, you Ralph, know him. The seven score. Yes, yeah. Ralph. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, one, one kilometer more than uh, I have now uh, on the road. Uh, my f- uh, philosophy was that I must be fast and uh, I can be fast only on time trail uh, bike. Yes, I'm quite a competitive person and I, have, uh, I must have some... Uh, some target, you know, and uh, the records are now for my target. Next up in the show was episode 27 with Italian ultra racer and event promoter Luca Maschini discussing his Giro d'Italia nonstop or gyms event covering 2,400 miles, almost 4,000 kilometers and 166,000 feet of climbing, which is over 50,000 meters all around the beautiful country of Italy, passing through historic cities like Venice, Milan, Rome, Naples, and over the snow-capped Alps. The first finisher uh, with uh, 11 days and 7 hours. The go solo is, I think, solo. I think to fix the problem solo. And, uh, but now I have uh, a wife. (laughs) <laughs> oh. I say that uh, will be a big experience where uh, the food, the, the place uh, and is very, very beautiful. What was your motivation for getting involved with the sport? Ah, it's simple. My friend in 2030 asked me if uh, I want to follow him during the, the race across America. And... Mm. And then start another, another uh, life. Episode 28 took us to France for the ultimate bike pursuit, where we talked with Pierre Charles, the winner of the ultimate Pyrenees pursuit, traversing the 2300 kilometer course over 1400 miles in first place with the time of 10 days, 16 hours and 45 minutes after climbing 55,700 meters, about 183,000 feet. Uniquely and almost unbelievably, Pierre has ridden 45,000 kilometers all around France this year, including over a month of nonstop riding from his home to the starting line of the race across France, then afterwards to the starting line of the ultra bike pursuit, and finally riding all the way back home as a cool down. Impressive. We'll have to keep following this 28-year-old climbing fanatic's journey as he attempts to climb every mountain range in the world. So wow. it's a fantastic cycling road. But Looks like if you it. have a loaded bike and you're tired and your hands are tired and you have a high pressure on your tires, uh, you can see with all the switchbacks that it's very, very tiring. But, uh, I want it to be extremely beautiful and also extremely challenging. Something mm-hmm. that I was not sure I would be able to finish myself. I'm running approximately 180 uh, kilometers. Mm. Actually, I, Pierre, uh, I did the calculation and it was 216 kilometers. Perhaps one of the takeaways is we need to all start eating almond paste. Maybe that's the key. Yes, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Congratulations to all the athletes featured on this show and tailwinds for all of your upcoming adventures. We can't wait to have you back on the show. We've covered a lot of exciting ultra-minded content already, but there's still so much more to come. So stay tuned as we enter strong into the month of November, featuring next Divya Tate, founder of Audax India and Inspire India, the sports management company that organizes the annual Deccan Cliffhanger and Ultra Spice Race, both Ram qualifiers, and also the Great Himalayan in India. Afterwards, we chat with Jeffrey Ritter, the corporate secretary of the World Ultra Cycling Association and an ultra cyclist himself with a hair-raising story about his transition to recumbent bicycles, racing in a variety of time trial championships. Christian Troll and George Franschitz dive into the details of their world-class race around Niederösterreich in the following episode. Also known as the race around Lower Austria, the course begins in the historic town of Weitra and traverses through 
through all four quadrants of Lower Austria, providing racers with both a challenging course as well as a beautiful one. The event is the first of its kind to live stream the entire 600 kilometer race around 372 miles with professional commentators, world renowned cycling guests and live interviews on the road with crews and racers. The winner this year was, of course, Christoph Strasser taking the victory in his home country of Austria. Well done, Christoph, Christian and George. There's a lot more action still to come, so stay tuned, and I look forward to seeing you back out here on the Interroads. The Ultra Cycling Show is by Ultra Cyclists for Ultra Cyclists, so be sure to let us know about your own adventures. We'd love to hear your story, event, or Ultra Cycling news. Everyone is welcome, and we can't wait to get connected. Check out our website for a full list of episodes, our YouTube video library, and of course, follow us on Facebook to get the latest and greatest straight to your feed. And if you're on the go, be sure to download our audio episodes from your favorite podcast platform, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Until next episode, Ultra Family, keep spinning ultra. Ultra.